In season one, we discussed allowing the Lord to both search us and fix our broken pieces. And we talked through the futility of trying to make yourself right. In this interview, you'll hear from Tony Mark, who speaks from such an earnest place about her 24-year walk with Jesus and what she's learned from trying to fix herself. Tony is the heart behind the blog, Less Trodden, which focuses on helping people to deepen their relationships with God by getting into his word every day. Stay tuned. Shauna Knox, and this is Further, where we explore the real Christ and the real you. The way to life is extremely narrow, and very few of us ever even find it. But let's keep looking. We'll do it together. In three short sentences, Tony, who are you? Jesus follower. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I feel like that's, and I know you, I don't really want to sound like over spiritual, but that, that guides everything else that I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that informs everything else. So I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a friend, mm -hmm. a daughter, a creative um, but if everything else were to go, I think me following Jesus is, is, is it. That's really all there is. Right. Is what I'm saying. You see? So, yeah. I want to jump into the content that we talked through in the last season. We talked right. at length about trying to fix what's broken in your life and in yourself. Do you have right. any experience with that? With doing that oh my goodness <laughs> do I ever have experience with that one of the biggest lessons for me has been to allow God to do things in me in his time mm -hmm. in his way you know like we know all these scriptures like he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it but mm -hmm. and you'll rattle it off like that right mm -hmm. but then it's the outworking of that that's tough. It's like, oh, I didn't begin this work in myself. Mm -hmm. And so I do not get to determine how this work happens or on what timeline, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, I think I have been more and more confronted with myself as a mom than I've ever been in my entire life. Because really? my children, yes, have mm -hmm. been like a mirror for me and it's been the way that God has been able to show me myself mm -hmm. um, the best. And so the only example, the, the one that comes first to mind is changing diapers. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's the perfect just example of us wanting to sit in our mess, mm -hmm. um, you know, and how God wants to help to clean us up and to remove those things from us, which we can't take with us into the next season or that new place that he wants to take us to. But we try to hold on to stuff. So at a certain age, I found, I've found with my two girls that at a certain age, they kind of fight you to change your diaper or they'll hide mm -hmm. when they've done like a really, you know, special number two diaper, they like hide. <laughs> so but there's no hiding it because the smell is there. You know, mm. when you've been hiding your sin for a long time, when you've been carrying around, you know, burdens, it's it's like nothing is hidden mm -hmm. to the Lord. Like he sees all of it, you know. So I'll say, hey, did you do, 
did you do a poo poo or whatever, you know? And of course, the answer is always no. No. <laughs> you know? It's embarrassing. So, of course, we know what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, it's embarrassing. You know, you get them on the changing table and there's this resistance. There's this struggle. Hmm. They're wanting to move and shift. And, and I'm trying to put them in the way that's best in order to help to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. But they're wanting to move and shift and go back to playing, go back to what's comfortable, going back to what's fun. And I'm trying to help them. Mm -hmm. Right. There, yeah. Another thing happens in all of that, too, where they're also trying to get their hands in the mix and try to help me with what I'm doing. Mm. And that only makes the process longer, mm -hmm. right? In the same way, you know, a lot of times when they're doing that, I find myself saying, hey, you can't help me with this. You're going to get yourself even more dirty. Mm. You know, you're going to make a bigger mess. And even as the words are coming out of my mouth, the Holy Spirit is like, hmm, <laughs> reminds me of someone. Where have we you seen know? this before? So, okay, mm -hmm. where have we seen this before? So um, definitely it is, it is in the stillness as I just release control mm -hmm. and lay back and allow God to do what only he can do in only his timing. Because the other thing with my kids is that they also decide when I am done. Mm. Like my daughters will say to me, well, one is five, so she's potty trained, but the other little one, no, she's saying just like her sister did all done. Like she'll just decide <laughs> Like, you're done. You've got to be done by now. Like, it's, I've given you enough time. Like, come on, lady, you have to be finished now. Mm. Like, based on my two-year-old, like, knowledge of diaper changing, you must be finished by now. Right. That's so, so loaded. Same thing with God. Yeah. Yeah. That's so loaded. That's so full. I want to yep. take it back to the beginning where you said, in his time, in his way. And before even kind of pivoting to his time and his way and his addressing of brokenness or your mess. I want to know what brokenness and messiness means to you. Brokenness and messiness, I think, is, is the human experience. I <laughs> think it is living in a fallen world. It is you know, being a, a, a product of what happened in the garden, the fall. And um, so it's, it's, it's life. It's part of the human experience. And there is no way out of that brokenness uh, outside of God, yeah. outside of Jesus. There's so. Yeah. And you gave this amazing analogy about your daughters and not, wanting the help that they needed and then wanting to control how they received that help. And it's really relatable. And I, I wonder if you can tell us about a time in your life when you were doing something similar, when you needed help, but you got your hands involved and tried to control the process. So, okay. So, so a very, uh, and when I say recent one in the last, what, Three years. Okay, so right before Ivy was born, she's my my younger one. Um, mm. You know, I have I have a, a most of my friends are back home in Jamaica, mm -hmm. which is right where I'm from, as you know. Mm -hmm. And pregnant with a second, and you know, in the states, unless you're like really well to do, most most of the household chores, you know, child rearing and all of that, you do on your own. Mm -hmm. So my friends who are all in Jamaica and used to a different type of life, they, mm -hmm. they were all like, oh, my gosh, how is this going to work? You're going to have another baby. Like, no, we have to get you help. We have to get you somebody to come and help you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, I'm all for it. So <laughs> they began to, like, interview people because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a lot, right? Mm -hmm. They began to interview people and, we, you know, we began to like try and figure out how we would get this person here and how that would all work out. Well, the long and short of it is that every single attempt failed, like, hmm. like every single one, like even one that seemed to be viable and possible, like it was just, yeah, this is mm -hmm. it. A few weeks before Ivy was born the lady just went like missing. She just ghosted me like, wow. <laughs> I just couldn't hear from her. 
And um, I began to feel a little bit nervous and like, okay, Lord, how is this going to work? And he, because I, I kind of felt like this is the only way, this is the only way this is going to work. Like, there is no other option. Like, there's no other way I'm going to survive this. And he brought to me the story, two stories he reminded me of, Gideon. Mm -hmm. And how before the battle, Gideon's army kept being whittled down. Like God kept having them do all these different things and just removing people from the army till the odds just didn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, so now we're like vastly outnumbered. Now it's just going to be a bloodbath. Like, no. No, you just, just, it's just like for sport now. Like you guys in heaven are just going to get your popcorn and just watch us die. Like clearly, <laughs> clearly this is what you have in mind, mm-hmm. right? That's how it kind of felt to me. Mm-hmm. But he reminded me that that was how he made sure that he got the glory. Mm-hmm. That there was no flesh that could glory because the army was just, it just would not have made sense to the natural mind. How could he have won this battle in the same way he was trying to show me through Gideon's story that, look, I'm going to have the odds so stacked against you Mm. that when you get through this, not even looking like what you've been through, Mm -hmm. you'll Mm. know it was me. Mm -hmm. And then he reminded me of the story of David and um, how David was prepared in the obscurity of, the pasture for his battle against Goliath, right? Mm-hmm. And so he was reminding me that I was my second child, not my first, mm-hmm. and that he had be- been preparing me through Charlie all these years mm-hmm. to be able to take care of Ivy and that it was going to be okay. I really like this experience specifically because I think it allows us to explore even the nuances of messiness and brokenness because on the one layer, there is just the inadequacy of knowing there's something you need to do. You don't have what you need in order to be able to do it. You need help. And then on- Or what you think you need. Yeah. Right. And a certain kind of help. (laughs) You're you're convinced you you need the help in one way. It comes in another way. Mm Mm-hmm. But then there's another layer of self-injury. Like there's something in you that is broken. Not even that you need help, but you are not right somewhere. And you can feel that I need to be right in this place and I'm not right. And I wonder if this was a scenario in which you felt more like I need help or it was pointing toward an actual area of brokenness inside of you where you were thinking in a certain way about yourself I think it it it's a little bit of both because mm. I <laughs> I felt like I needed to control the way I got help I felt mm-hmm. like I knew exactly the help that I needed and in what form it should come and I couldn't open my mind to see okay there might be another way or if all things work together for my good if God is constantly working.